I've been coaching tennis over 20 years, and in that time, I've noticed one thing more than any other it keeps players from improving level after level after level. Most tennis players don't have any trouble going from beginner to an intermediate level, but then they get stuck at that point. And in this video, I'm gonna expose exactly what that is so you can avoid it and break free to the next level. Hey, my name's Ian. I'm the founder here at EssentialTennis.com where I've helped more than a million tennis players improve over the years through my videos, podcasts, and best-selling book on Amazon. Tennis players have a knowledge problem, but it's probably the opposite of what you think. It's not that there's some kind of secret tip or trick that's eluding them. It's actually the opposite. They have too much knowledge. You ever hear the phrase, you don't know what you don't know? Well, your average tennis player, especially one who's been kind of plateaued for a little while and is struggling to break free to the next level, they know way more about tennis technique and they know way more about tennis strategy than what they actually do. And there's a huge gap between what's in here and what they're actually able to execute on. And it happens in terms of technique and like swing mechanics, but surprisingly, it also happens in strategy where they think they're doing something, but they're actually not. Let me give you a quick example of each one so that you can keep an eye out for it and hopefully avoid falling into that trap. Not too long ago, I had a student who had a really extreme forehand. He had tons and tons of topspin, so much so that every ball was like a high topspin lob. He was like a moon ball type of player, and he didn't know how to get out of that rut. So in showing him how to hopefully drive through the ball more, create more power and create more penetration and attack more, we were trying to get him to swing through his forehand more, but he just couldn't do it. Every time he tried to swing more direct and drive the ball more, he kept dropping his racket super low and swinging up super fast, and he continued to make that super aggressive topspin. So finally, I said, tell you what, just swing down. I know you know you're not supposed to swing down, but on this next toss for, on your forehand, just swing down at the ball. I don't care, just hit the bottom of the net. So he swung down, and then we grabbed the iPad and looked at it, and he didn't swing down at all. He thought for sure that, oh, that was it. Like, fine, fine, Ian, I won't swing up anymore. I'm just gonna swing down. And he actually was swinging level, totally straight. So for this student, what felt like down actually was forwards. How in the world are you supposed to get better at tennis when you think you're swinging in one direction, you're actually swinging someplace completely different. It's that kind of gap that keeps players from reaching their goals because they assume they're doing X, but they're actually doing Y. So technique is one thing, but what about strategy? Like for sure, you've got to know like where you're standing on the court, where you're aiming. After all, you're the one that's making those decisions, right? Well, not exactly. I see gaps all the time with players where they think they're doing something, but they're really not. A recent student, I played some points with him because he told me he wanted to improve his single strategy and positioning and patterns and targets. So we played some points together. And then before I showed him what was happening, I asked him some basic questions about where should you be standing and where should you be aiming and what's the highest percentage shot and where should you, what kind of patterns should you be playing, so on and so forth. And he got every single question correct. He, he answered correctly and was able to tell me where he should aim and why. It was obvious his tennis IQ is, was really, really high. He'd done his homework. Then I went through the point play that we had just done together and showed him a bunch of examples of him actually doing the opposite thing from what he just told me that he was supposed to be doing. So how crazy is that? I'm telling you, if you're watching me right now, you also have those gaps in your game. And it's not just how you move your racket or how you move your body. It's as basic as where you're standing and where you're aiming are probably the opposite in some cases of what you think they are. If this has been helpful, or you're enjoying the video, do me a favor and click the like button. It helps with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much. So here's the two biggest problems. And this is why most tennis players won't be four or five players, just like the title of the video says. It's not clickbait. Like this is why players get stuck. Problem number one is year after year after year of being a student of the game, having a passion for trying to improve, taking lessons, watching videos, reading books, listening to podcasts, talking to their friends, so on and so forth. Their book smarts get higher and higher and higher. Their tennis IQ increases year after year after year, lesson after lesson after lesson. And so it's easy to assume that as your knowledge does this, 
then your skills and your habits will also be doing this. But it's not true because there's a big difference between what's in here, your knowledge, and what's in here, like your training and your habits. They're two different things. They're not the same thing. And big problem number two, trap number two that players fall into, is year after year of playing and maybe competing, like playing on a team, having success, winning matches, maybe going to sectionals or maybe going to nationals. It's easy to have the same assumption that win after win, it's easy to assume that my skills are building and building and building and building. But after a certain point, most players plateau. And so if you don't do something fundamentally different than what you've been doing to get to that level and win at that level, you won't go to the next level, you'll just stay at that level you're currently at. And so year after year of learning, year after year of playing, it's easy to think I need the next level information and then I need the next level information. But guess what? If you're a 3-0 player, it's the fundamentals that are keeping you from 3-5. If you're a 3-5 player, it's the fundamentals that are keeping you from 4-0. If you're currently a 4-0 player, it's the fundamentals that are keeping you from 4-5. And if you're already a 4-5, it's the fundamentals that are keeping you from 5.0. It's always the fundamentals. Until you become like an elite world-class player, there's nothing beyond the fundamentals that you have to get better and improve and do more precisely and do more consistently and do more athletically. It's always, it always comes back to the fundamentals. But players assume that they must need some new and different and special information to go from 3.0 to 3.5 and 3.5 to 4.0 and 4.0 to 4.5. I'm sorry if that disappoints you, but it's not. And so don't trick yourself into thinking that you need to move on in terms of your tennis IQ. What's actually happening is you've stopped improving the fundamentals that you probably already knew you were supposed to be doing. So now that we understand the problem and why we get stuck, how do we solve this gap between feel and real? How do we bring ourselves closer to alignment between what we know we're supposed to be doing and what we're actually really doing in real life. There's only one surefire way to do this, and that's record yourself, watch it closely, and take some notes, and you can do that in five different categories. Watch yourself play a match, and I would recommend doing this separately, by the way. Don't do all five at once, or you're gonna overwhelm yourself. Watch yourself play a match, and take notes about things related to your technique that you notice that holy crap, I can't believe I'm like not turning more on my forehand or I'm not finishing where I think I should be on my back or where I thought I was on my backhand or whatever it is. Spend half an hour, watch yourself play and take notes on technique. Then watch yourself a separate, separate time, a different time and watch your positioning on the court. Where are you standing in between shots after you finish a shot? Where are you recovering to? And take notes on that. Then. On a separate occasion, watch yourself play again and watch and take notes about your targets. Where am I aiming and when and why? And does that even make sense when I'm running over in that direction to hit down the line or whatever it is? Watch again and take notes about footwork. Do you look clunky and mechanical? Are you making a split step? The answer is probably no. You're probably not making a split step because most tennis players don't but take notes about your, your footwork specifically. And then fifthly, fifth time you watch yourself, if you're brave enough to get to this point, take notes on your mental toughness. How do you respond between points? How quickly do you bounce back after frustration or failure? What is your state like? Are you like positive? Are you negative? Can you shrug off errors? Or do you go into a downward spiral emotionally, mentally? Five different ways that you can watch yourself make a list and now the next couple weeks the next couple months is it going to be painful at first watching through probably but guess what the next couple weeks and months are going to be the most productive highest focused most impactful chunk of time that you've probably ever spent on your tennis game because you're going to be actually doing the things that were eluding you you're going to be actually doing the things that were separating you from where you are now in the next level because they're not going to be hidden in plain sight anymore. It's not about you don't know what you don't know. It's that you don't know what you're not doing, even though you already know you're supposed to be doing it.